The three eras of Mortal Kombat are directly analogous to the three eras of Star Wars movies. The 2D era is the original trilogy, the much beloved original incarnation of the franchise that very few fans would claim to dislike. Each subsequent era is built on the foundation set by this one, but in two very different ways. I could say, allow me to tell you a story, and get into how the story follows a noble young warrior who must become a hero like his legendary predecessor, his serious militaristic female companion, the selfish playboy who matures and marries the female companion, a mystical mentor who guides the hero, the mentor's villainous turncoat counterpart, and the evil emperor said turncoat now serves, but that really isn't the focus here. The 3D era is the prequel trilogy, an early 2000s continuation by mostly the same people that many fans claim to have always hated nowadays, but most of them are very obviously lying for internet clout. It sought to expand the setting and explore new ideas that the fandom generally appreciated at the time. After this era ended, however, the online fandom developed a truly obnoxious disdain for this era of the franchise, refusing to acknowledge the many genuinely good aspects of it, preferring to shit on it for being too different from the original era. But at least Disney doesn't join in on the bashing. The Netherrealm era is the Disney era, the era of the franchise that began in the 2010s after it came under new management from being purchased by one of the most powerful entertainment corporations in the world. It kicked off a soft reboot with a pseudo remake of the original installment, relying heavily on fan service from the original three installments to get by, while largely avoiding elements from the middle era. From there, it moved on to a new installment that strove to move away from the old series and strike out in a new direction, which proved somewhat divisive. And then, the climax of the trilogy that brings this era of the franchise to an end doubles down on the fan service because the new creative team has no idea where to go without relying on rehashed elements and characters from the original originals, going so far as to bring the main antagonist of the original trilogy back from the dead as a desperate major selling point. This era is marked by a lack of compelling new ideas, a firm emphasis on fan service in place of any real substance, a total lack of respect for many of the franchise's most popular and iconic characters, particularly the total mishandling of the franchise's original hero, and a descent into trying to court a whole new demographic that hates absolutely everything the long-established fanbase likes about the franchise via a woeful inept and out-of-touch attempt at being progressive that pisses off a lot of the people they're trying to appeal to. This has turned even many fans of this era sour on the franchise. But hey, MK's new female lead with incredible power she mastered mere days after learning of its existence that allows her to topple the most powerful villains in the setting with little to no issue, at least has a personality and is never marketed on her gender nor shoved down our throats as clearly better than the old heroes the fans loved. I guess, as incompetent and disrespectful as Netherrealm's writers can be, they aren't quite so stupid or conceited that they think that's a good idea. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Fixing Disney's Star Wars Problem by Full Fat Videos. I know this one's a little old having come out around the time Solo did, but it has what I think is an interesting take on the subject that you don't really see covered by a lot of other people who are more focused on the immediate storytelling of the films themselves rather than how the setting itself isn't being explored properly by Disney in the way that Lucasfilm did. 